Hello there and welcome to the GCSE revision video. Here we are going to look at set notation and Venn diagrams. So let's go through the basics. So we need to know a few uh, symbols first. So this uh, kind of squiggly E-shaped symbol, that represents basically all the numbers or all the letters that are going to be in your question. So it's called the universal set, but for you, I want you to think about it as it's everything that's going to be involved in this question. I can't think about everything in the universe, so I'm thinking about what is involved in this question, and it will be defined by this universal set symbol. There's a, um, an N kind of looking symbol, an upside down C. Um, that means and, or both, or intersection between two different sets of uh, numbers or letters. The U-shaped symbol, that represents or, or either, either the first set or in the second set. It doesn't matter, either or, that's absolutely fine. Uh, a with a dash. Now, if you have a set A, what A with a dash means is everything that's not in that set. So everything that's outside the Venn diagram, everything that's on the side, maybe it's in set B, but as long as it's not in A, you're absolutely fine. And then if you ever see a circle with a line through it, that means absolutely nothing. Could put not even zero, absolutely nothing, kind of the empty set or the set with nothing in it. And then if you ever see this kind of curvy E-shaped symbol, so it's like a C with a line through it, that means exists in. So if you're thinking 2 exists in the even numbers, then that will be an example of exists in. Okay, so please make sure you've remembered these or got them on some kind of uh, question and answer revision cards so you are re revising them regularly um, and uh, they're constantly in your brain. Okay, so the universal set, um, that represents every element in the question, so every element in the question at some point will exist in this square. That's why we put a square around the outside of our Venn diagram questions. Um, we put two circles, maybe three circles sometimes, um, but we make sure there's a square around it or a box around it to make sure that that keeps in everything from the universal set. A and B, so if we're looking for the set of A and the set B, or in other words, the intersection of sets A and B, that would be every element that belonged in this intersection part. Okay, so any numbers that appear, or letters that appear in here, that will belong in the sets A and B, or the intersection of A and B. A or B, so this is an element that's either in A or it's in B. So could be a here, could be here, or it could be both. It doesn't necessarily need to just be one of the sets in A or B. It can be in both of them if it wants to be. As long as it's in A or it's in B, and that's absolutely fine. If it's in both, fantastic. A with a dash means everything that's not in the set A or everything outside the bubble of A. So this bit here is not in the set A, so that's part, anything inside this region here counts as not being an A. But also, does this outside bit as well, there might sometimes be elements around the side of your circles, that as well would not exist in A. The middle bit, yes it's part of B, but because it's also part of A, it's not in this set of A dash, so it's, you wouldn't count any elements in the intersection. Let's uh, do something a little bit more complicated now. A and B, but not in there. Okay, so let's think about it. Let's do the inside brackets first. A and B, but everything that's not in there. So it's anything here, anything here, or anything on the outside. Okay, so your, your set notation might get a little bit more complicated, something like this. Just think through it. Start from the inside first. A and B, okay, so that's this section here. Not it. Oh, okay, so it's everything else. It's not that section I just currently highlighted. Okay, so, um, and another point uh, you must remember when filling in a Venn diagram, if you're given some information, is that uh, when you're filling in a Venn diagram with information, start by working from the centre and work your way outwards. So let's say the set A contained 13 people, set B contains 19 people, set A intersection B, so the intersection of A and B contains eight people, that's where I would start. I'd start with eight people here, 
Then I'd have a look at set A, and set A combined needs to have 13 people in it. So therefore, there only needs to be five extra people here to make the whole set of A equal to 13. Okay, so it's a little bit more difficult than just putting in the numbers into your diagram. You have to think about, okay, I've already put eight people in, now the whole set will be 13, so what do I have left over? And in the parts, the section for B that's not in A, I already have eight. I'd like a total of 19 people for that whole group, so that's going to be 11 people left over. And the universal sets contains 50 people, so there will be some people outside of the two circles. Let's work out how many people are currently inside the two circles. So that's going to be 13 plus 11, so that's going to be 24. So there's going to be 26 people who aren't even in the sets of A and B. Think of it as liking apples and liking bananas. We have eight people that like both, five people just like apples, 11 people that just like bananas, and 26 people don't like either apples or bananas. Okay, let's get started on the uh, past exam questions now. Pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, so what this question is saying here is that we have a universal set um, of the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are the questions we're going to be considering. These are the, these are the numbers we're going to be considering for this question. The set A contains all the odd numbers, and the set P contains all the prime numbers. List of the members of the set A into section P. So, what would be a good idea and sensible to do is just to list the members of A. A is all the odd numbers, so that's 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And the prime numbers are all the numbers that are prime. So that includes 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. And we want the intersection of the set A and P. So I want any number that's in both of sets A and in sets P. So 3. 3 belongs in both of the sets. So it is 5, and so does 11. Okay? And we'll put these squiggly little brackets around it, because that's what you do with sets. And A or P... Well, for A or P, you're looking for any element of the universal set that's either in A or it's in B. If it's in both, great, but it has to be at least in one of the two sets. So that's every number I've just written down. 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Okay, so that's every element that's either in A or in P will go in this last set here. So this is both and this is either. Okay, let's move on to the next one, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so this time we're given letters for our sets rather than numbers. So, the intersection of A and V, so this is an AND question, it has to be in both. Okay, so it's a S, no, S is not in both. E, E is in both. E can be first. A, A, A is in both. And U, U is in both. So O. Okay, so those are the elements of S and V. And the second question is either. So the letter can either be in set S or it can be in set V. So that's going to be S, Q, U, A, R, E. Whoops. A, R, E, and then anything else that was extra, I and O. Okay, so those are the, and you don't really need to have them in a set order as long as you've got all the elements in, in an order, in, in, a, in the brackets. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so the first one, remember, that's AND, so it has to be in both of sets A and B. So, let's have a look at set A and have a look at set B. I can see that 3 is in both, 5 is in both, and 7 is in both. In the second one, it's either in A or it's in B. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 
nine. Very similar to the first question, this one, but there we are. So hopefully you're getting the hang of it now. When it says the little N symbol, that means both. And when it says a U symbol, either, either in one set or in the other set. Okay, pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, so list the members of sets A and C. So anything that's in both of sets A and C. So let's have a look at A and have a look at C. So I see six, six is in both. 12, 12 is in both, and that's it. Second question, it can be in either of set A or in set B. So uh, let's just write down all the numbers that appear in either set A or B. So 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14. Hopefully I didn't miss any there. I'm just writing out all the numbers from A and all the numbers from B. Okay. And explain why A and B equals a circle with a line through it. So the circle with a line through it means nothing, absolutely nothing whatsoever. So the reason that A intersection B equals null set is that there is no common elements between A and B. No common elements in A and B. There's absolutely nothing, not even the zero, not even the zero, absolutely nothing, zilch. Okay, so there we are, that's the answer to that question. Let's move on to the next one, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so this is a little bit of a tricky question here. The universal set contains every single even number. The set A contains all the factors of 8, so that's uh, all factors, so it's going to be 2, 1, 1 is a factor of 8, 4 and 8, and then factors of 20, that would be 1, 2, 4, 5, uh, 10, 20. So, this is the members of A and B, that's both A and B, so A intersection B is equal to anything that's in both of the two sets, uh, 1, 2, and 4. So there we are. That's the answer to that question. Oh, wait, hold on. No, it's not the answer to the question, because the universal set is just even numbers. So the number 1 is not considered for this question. The universal set only contains even numbers, so therefore I'm only thinking about even numbers in this question. So therefore the 5 would not be in this question, the number one would not be in this question at all. Okay, that's uh, the answer to that one. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this question a go. <clears throat> okay, so part A is list the members of set A or B. So this is A or B. So I'm listing every element that's in either set A or in set B. So 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 12. There we are. Uh, C is a set of four numbers. The intersection of A and C is the null set, and the intersection of B and C is the null set. Now what this is effectively saying here is it's saying that C contains nothing from A and nothing from B. So let's have a think about what C could be. Uh, we've got the number 2, that's in A, so we can't use that. 3, can't use that. 4, can't use that. 5, we can use 5. 6, can't use that. 7, yeah, can use 7. 8, can't use that. 9, can't use that. 10, can't use that. 11, can use that. 12, can't use that. 13, can use that. It's got four elements, so perfect. That's the set C. It has nothing in common with A or B. Right then, let's move on to the next question. Pause this video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question here, the universal set, that means all the numbers we're considering for this question are the positive whole numbers less than 13, so 1 to 12. A is the even numbers, B is the multiples of 3, C is the prime numbers. 
list the elements of the set A and B. So that's anything that's in A and anything that's in B. Well, this, this is just going to be 6 and 12 because these are both even numbers and they are both multiples of 3. Part 2 is anything in B or in C. So I have to now write out anything that's in B or anything that's in C. So 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, uh, and 12. So some of these numbers here are prime numbers. And some of these numbers here are multiples of 3. And they all belong in the set of B or C. Part B, is it true that 14 exists in A? Well, 14 is an even number, so it looks right. But actually, the universal set for this question is less than 13. So the answer here is no. Reason being is that 14 is not a number considered for this question. 14 does not exist in the universal set. OK. All right, then, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so in this question here, we're only considering the numbers from 1 to 10. A is the even numbers. B are the multiples of 13. List the members of the set B. So that's multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9. List the members of the set A or B. So that's anything in A or in B. So that's 2, 3, 4, not 5, 6, not 7, 8, 9, uh, 10. List the members of the set A and B. Well, that's anything that's in both of these two sets, both an even number and a multiple of 3. The only element there is 6. OK, so X is a member of the universal set. It exists in B, but not in A. What possible values are there for x? So, it exists in b, so the elements of b are 3, 6, and 9. But it doesn't exist in set a, so it can't be the number 6. So the only two values we have left are 3, whoops, 3 and 9. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so the first part is the universal set is all its students from year 12. G represents those who study German. F is the students who study French. M is those who study maths. G and M equals the null set. Use the information to write down a statement about the students who study German in year 12. Well, the intersection of G and M is nothing. Or in other words, no one studies both. German and maths. So no German students study maths. Okay. <clears throat> uh, pretty is a student in year 12. Pretty does not exist in F. Use this information to write statements about Pretty. Um, she does not study French. OK, moving on to the next one. So it's a kind of different section of the question now. A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. A and B is equal to 2 and 4. A or B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8 and 10. List all the members of B. So let's maybe draw ourselves a Venn diagram. We can visualise this. So in the set A exists the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. But the intersection of A and B is 2 and 4. So 2 and 4 exist in both. Uh, we have therefore the numbers 6, 8 and 10 that exist in just A. And if we have then A or B is equal to this set of numbers here, then we know that 3 and 1 uh, exist over this side here. So list all the elements of B. B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. 
That's all the elements of B, all of the elements in this part of the Venn diagram. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question here we have the numbers from 1 to 10. A is equal to the numbers 1 to 6 and B are the odd numbers. So that's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. List the members of A or B. So that's anything in set A or in set B. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 9. C is a set such that A and C is equal to 4 and 5. The set C has 4 members. List the possible members of one possible set of C. Okay, so let's draw ourselves a Venn diagram. The intersection of A and C is 4 and 5. We know that A has the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 6 in it as well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in set A. So now we're looking for numbers that could potentially be in set C. Well, it's either going to be 7, 8, 9, or 10. But given that set C only has four members, it's just going to be four members out of these possible six. So list the members of one possible set for C. Well, C could be the set 4, 5, 7, and 8. It could also be 4, 5, 9, and 10 could be 4, 5, 8, and 9. As long as it has 4 and 5 in it, and then two of these numbers, we're absolutely fine. OK, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so in this question, it's the whole numbers from 3 up to 18. A is the set 3, 6, 9, 18. B is the set 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. C is the set 6, 12, 18. List all the members of the intersection of set A and B. That's anything in A and it also has to be in B. So let's compare A and B. 3 is in both, 6 is in both, 9 is in both, and that's the only one. So this is effectively a both calculation. This one here is an OR calculation, so it's either in A or it's in C. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 18. Those members are in set A or in set C. Sasha writes down that 12 exists, so sorry, it's, it's the E symbol with a line through it, which means does not exist in. So 12 does not exist in A, is Sasha correct? Let's look at the set A, is 12 in there? No, so yes, Sasha is correct. 12 is not in A, not in set A. Okay, there we are. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, let's get started then. So list the members of the set A and B. So they have to be in both A and B. So P is in both of them, R is in both of them, A is in both of them, and that's it. Second part, list the members of the set B or C. So that's any num any letter that's in B or it could be in C as well. So P, A, R, I, S, and then B, U, D, A's already in there, P's already in there, E's not in there yet, S is already in there, T is not in there yet. Moving on to the next part, put one of the letters D, E or F in the box to make the statements correct. So A intersection something equals a circle with a line through it. Now remember, the circle with a line through it is the null set. That means nothing. Absolutely nothing. So that means the intersection of A and B that's where they both uh, set the letters that are in both of the sets. There's nothing in common. So let's have a look at this here. So looking at D, well, D has an E in it, so that has something in common. E, L, I, S, B, O, N. It's E. The answer is E. Let's just check F as well. F has an E in it, so they, they share a letter as well. So it's E. The reason it's E is because... 
they do not share any letters. Okay, there's nothing that you could find that's in both set A and in set E. Okay, let's move on to the next question, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, questions, so we have A is super, B is computer, list the members of set A and B, so that's uh, letters that are in both, so S, no, U, yes, P, yes, E, yes, R, yes. List the elements of the set A or B, so that's, in, that's letters that are in either of the two sets, so super, C, O, M, P is already in there, U is already in there, T is not in there yet, E is already in there, R is in there, there we are. Moving on to part B, X is, exists, sorry, X is equal to the prime numbers, Y is equal to the factors of 12. Is it true that X intersection Y is equal to the null set? That means, is there anything in common between X and Y? Yes, the number 2. The number 2 is a prime number and it's a factor of 12, also 3, 3 is a factor of 12, and that's it. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the next question, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question here we're only considering even numbers. The set A is filled with the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10, B is a set such that A intersection B, or the elements that are in both of sets A and B, is equal to 4 and 8. The set B has three members. List the, po list the members of one possible set for B. Let's draw ourselves a Venn diagram to help us visualise the situation. We'll call this set A and this set B. We know the intersection of the two sets are 4 and 8. We also know that set A has some other numbers in it as well, such as numbers 2, 6 and 10. These are not in the intersection of A and B, but they are in set A, so they have to belong in this part of the circle. Now we're looking at this section here, and we know that set B has three members. Now we know that the possible elements that we can choose from are the even numbers. So if I choose the number 12 here, that's an even number. It's not in set A, so it could be in set B. So therefore, one possible answer to this question is 4, 8 and 12. The answer would be 4, 8 and any other even number. Moving on to part B, C is a set such that A intersection C is the null set, or in other words, they have nothing in common. The set C has three members, list the members of one possible set for C. Well, if C has nothing in common, then it might be, say, the numbers 20, 22, 24, that's just three other even numbers that aren't 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. I've just chosen 20, 22, 24 because I just thought of those as odd as even numbers. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question here we're considering the question to be out of all the whole positive numbers less than 19. A is the set of odd numbers, so that's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17. Multiples of 5 will be 5, 10 and 15. And multiples of 4 will be 4, 8, 12, 16. <clears throat> so, list the members of the set A intersection B, that's in both of sets A and in set B, so 5 is in both of the two sets, and 15 is in both of the two sets. Members of B or C, so as long as it's in B or C, that's fine, 4, 5, 8, 10, 12, 15, 16. 
D here is a prime number. Is it true that B intersection D is equal to the null set? Or in other words, is there nothing in common? Well, no, 5. 5 is a prime number, and 5 is in the set B, so 5 is a member of both sets. 5 is a member of both sets. So the set is not empty. OK, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question. OK, so the universal set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 12. A is representing all even numbers, and B is representing just the numbers 4, 7, 8, and 11. List the members of A or B. So as long as it's in A or B, they're going to be in this set. So the even numbers will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So I'm going to write all the numbers in set A and in set B. So 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. Is it true that 20 exists in A? Well, A is all even numbers, but A, but 20 is not in the universal set. So no, because 20 does not exist in, uh, let's do that funny symbol, the universal set. C is a set such that A intersection C is equal to the null set and B intersection C is equal to 7. The set C has three members. List one possible set for C. OK, well C must have the number 7 in it. It must have the number 7 because that's the intersection of B and C. And it can't have any of the numbers 4, 8 or 11, otherwise they would also be in this set here. And it also can't have any of the even numbers either because the intersection of A and C is nothing. So I need to look for numbers that are either not in B, apart from number 7, and not in A. So 1 would fit that criteria, 3 would fit that criteria, and that's all I need. I only need three members there. I might want to put 5 in, I might want to put 9 in, I could also put those two in. 7, 1 and 3 is absolutely fine as an answer though. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this question. OK, so in this question here, we're considering the elements 1 up to 10. The set A is 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. The set B is equal to numbers greater than 6. So that's starting from 7, 8, 9, 10. If it wanted to include 6, it would say greater than or equal to. List the members of set A or B. So anything that's in set A or it's in set B. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. As long as it's in one of the two sets, that's fine. Set C is equal to 3, 6, 9. This is the members of the set's intersection A and C. So anything that's in A, and it also must be in C, it must be in both. So 3 and 9 are elements of both of them. D is a set with four members. 5 exists in D. And B and D, this is the null set, so there's nothing in common between B and D. This is the members of one possible set for D. So I know 5 is in D, that's a given. And I know that nothing else will be shared with the set B. So none of these elements here, 5, 8, 9 or 10, will be in set D. So I just need three more elements now. 1, 2, 3. And there we are, that's the answer to this question here. OK, so let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this question a go. OK, so let's have a look at this question. We've got the numbers from 1 to 9 involved in this question. A is the numbers 1, 3, 5 and 7. B is the set 2, 4, 6 and 8. Explain why A intersection B is a circle with a line through it. Now remember, a circle with a line through it is the null set. It means there's nothing in that set. So it's because there is no element, there is no element 
in both sets A and B. Okay, so there we are. X exists in the universal set, so that's a number from 1 to 9. And X does not exist in A or B. Write down the value of X. So it, X does not exist in A or B, so therefore it must be the number 9. Because number 9 does not exist in set A or in set B. Okay, moving on to the last one. A intersection B, so A intersection C is 3 and 7. So we know that set, uh, the set C has the numbers 3 and 7 in it. We also know that B and C have the uh, intersection of the number 8. So it must have the set 8 in it, the number 8 in it. And we also know that A or B or C adds up effectively to make the universal set. So it must also contain the element 9 because A and B and C combine together to at least make up the universal set. So this is the answer to C. It has to contain the elements 3 and 7 because that's what it shares with A. It has to contain the number 8 because that's what it shares with B. And it also has to contain the number 9 because when we combine all the three sets together, we get the universal set. So there we are. That's the answer to this question. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so we're working with the numbers from 1 to 13 here. We have, um, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers, miss, 11 numbers on the diagram. So we have, therefore, 2 missing. So let's have a look at set A. Contains the numbers 3, 7, 11, and 13, but 11 is not on the diagram yet, and 11 is not in B or in C, so it exists in this area here. Uh, we're also missing the element 6. 6 is in the sets of B and C, so it must go there, because it doesn't exist in A. Okay, now to move on to the questions, list the members of not B and C. So that's anything that's not in B and it must be in C. So that's going to be 2, 5, 7 and 8. These elements are not in B and they are in C. Moving on to the next one. List the members of the set A or C not, so anything in A or C not those, so it'd just be these elements here, and in B, so that would be 9 and 12. Okay, so yeah, so that's uh, A or C, not those. So anything that's in A or C, you can now cross those out. And it must be in B, so it's 9 and 12. Moving on to part D, list the members of not A, intersection not B. So this is a bit of a difficult one. So it's anything that's not in A, so that's uh, all of these, all of these, and all of these, intersection values that are not in B. So that will exclude these here, it will exclude that one there, so it will be 2, 5, 8, 1, 4 and 10. 2, 5, 8, 1, 4 and 10. These values here are not in A and they're not in B either. So that's these values here. Okay, a little bit tricky that question there. Uh, hopefully you've done alright on that one. Maybe come back to it in a couple of days time. OK, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so we have a element of the, the whole uh, universal set here is fish that are in Jake's Lake. Set A is fish of length greater than 20 centimetres. B is fish great, weighs more than one kilogram. And C is fish less than one year old. A fish in Jake's lake is caught. The fish is two years old, weighs 1.2 kilograms, so it's satisfying not this one, this one, and not this one. Uh, write down the set A, B, or C, which the fish is a member of. So it's just in set B. It's uh, greater than. It's not greater than 20 centimetres. It's two years old, so it's not less than one year old, so just B. Describe in words what the member of set A or B represents. So, in this case here, it's going to be fish 
either greater than 20 centimeters long or fish weighing more than one kilogram. So it's either of those two criteria. The last part, B in section C is the null set. Explain what this statement tells you about the fish in Jake's Lake. There are no fish over one kilogram and um, less than one year old. Okay, in other words, you could say here that all fish below one years old are more than one kilogram. Okay, there we are. That's the answer to that question now. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's draw the Venn diagram out. Okay, so we have 31 students in the class in total. That means the sum of all of these numbers here must add up to 31. The only languages available for the class to study are French and Spanish. 17 students study French. 15 students study Spanish. 6 students study neither French nor Spanish. So that 6 number is the first number I can put in. It's going to go in the bottom right. Use the Venn diagram or otherwise to work out the, how many students only study one language. Okay, now usually the strategy for this would be to fill in the centre first, but I don't know how many students speak French and Spanish. So I'm going to have to put a little X here. Now let's look at the people who study French. 17 people study French, but we've already got X of them in this intersection. So therefore, this section here must be 17 minus X. Effectively, let's say this is 5 in the middle, it would be 12 students studying French here that don't study Spanish. The total collective there would be 17. So 17 minus x plus x will always add to make 17, no matter what the x number is. And that just makes sure that this circle here is 17. And similar for Spanish, 15 minus x over here to make sure that the circle represents 15 students. And... <clears throat> And now we've got to make sure that when we add all of these elements together, we get 31, including the 6 on the outside. So one of these negative x's will cancel out the positive x. 17 plus 15, that's 32, plus 6, which is 38. So here x is equal to 7. So it's going to be 7 in the middle here now. It's going to be 10 over here and it's going to be 8 over here. So how many students study just one language? 18 students study one language. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to that question. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's draw a Venn diagram out. And one, two, three. Okay, so we have uh, French, German, and Spanish speaking people. Uh, 10 do not speak any of the languages. So 10 do not speak any of the languages. Four speak French and Spanish, but not German. So that'd be four students here. Two people speak French, German, and Spanish. So that would be two people here. 31 speak French in total, so we'll have to leave that one to the end. Seven people speak German and Spanish. So if seven people speak German and Spanish, we've already got two of them in the diagram, that must mean five of them are left that speak just German and Spanish. 
all ten people who speak German speak at least one other language. So that's ten people that study German, all of whom speak another language. So that must mean there are zero people here. And if the total is ten, then that must mean three people are here. We can now work out the French speakers. That's going to be thirty-one in total. Take away nine, so that's going to be twenty-two. And then we can work out what's left over in this cell here. I think I'll reach for my calculator here. So it's going to be 50, take away 31 for all the people inside the French circles, plus 10, oh sorry, minus, minus 31, minus 5, minus 10. We've got four people left over. Okay, so there we are. So that's the Venn diagram. Two people are now chosen at random. Work out the probability they both speak Spanish. OK, so how many Spanish people do we have in total? 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10, that's 15. So 15 people in total. So 15 out of 50 would be the first one. And then if we pick, pick another one out of there, we've only got 14 more people to choose from out of 49 people left over. So 15 times 14. That's 210 over 50 times 49. That's 2450. Oh. And then let's do 210 divided by answer to simplify the fraction. 3 out of 35. So there we are. That's the answer to that question. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so let's start by drawing a Venn diagram. So you draw the box around first, and then all of your. OK, so let's go for it. All 50 people like at least one of the drinks. So that's either tea, coffee, or milk. So zero will go on the outside. 19 people like all three drinks. That's important. That will go in the centre first. 16 people like tea and coffee, but not milk. So that's going to be this, this cell here, 16. 21 people like coffee and milk, so coffee and milk, that's 21 people, so that would just be two people here because then the intersection will be 21. 24 people like tea and milk, so that's 24, so that would be five people here. 40 people like coffee in total, so 40 take away 19, take away 16, take away 2, that's 3. One person likes only milk, one person here. Then we need to work out what this leftover value here is. So it's going to be 50. Take away all of these other values. 1 minus 5 minus 2 minus 19 minus 16 minus 3. 4. We have 4 people left over there. And you can check your answer by adding these all up and hopefully they equal 50. Work out the probability a person likes T. So it's going to be out of 50, this probability. And then we're going to have to count up those people who like T. So it's going to be 35. Add 5, add 4. 44. Or effectively, we can say we've got 6 people left over. So it'll just be 50 minus 6. Then we can simplify this fraction to 22 over 25. Given the person selected at random from the 50 people likes T, so we're given that they like T, so that's we're out of 44 now. Find the probability this person also likes exactly one drink. So that must mean they only like T. If um, given that the people selected at random from the 50 people likes T, find the probability this person only likes one drink. Well, therefore they only must like T. So it's four out of 44, so one out of 11. OK, so because it says, um, given that the person selected at random likes T, it, we know our fraction is going to be out of 44. And then because this person only likes one drink, if we know they like T, and we know they like only one drink, therefore they don't like milk or coffee. So it's only these four people we're considering here, 1 out of 11. OK, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go.
Okay, so let's draw a Venn diagram out then. Okay, so in this case it's three faults, braking, steering and lighting. So, 11 cars had braking faults. Let's go to the on intersections first, really. No car had both steering faults and lighting faults. So that's no car had steering or lighting faults. So this intersection here is empty. No car had both steering and lighting faults. So it's zero in both of those two cells there. Two cars had both braking and steering faults. Three cars had both braking and lighting faults. Okay, so now we can go to the outside ones now. 11 cars had braking faults, so we've got five already, so that's six left over. Nine cars had steering faults, so that must be seven left over. And down the bottom, it's going to be seven cars have lighting faults, so that's four down the bottom there. Okay, uh, garage says was a car fails test. Okay, so great. Okay, so we don't have any on the outside. By drawing a Venn diagram or otherwise, find the number of cars who failed the test last week. So just add all these numbers together. 6 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7. So that's going to be 10, 22, 22. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to that question. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, let's get started then. So drawing out the Venn diagram, again, we have three different circles here. So this time it's going to be a desktop, a laptop, or a tablet. Five students have all three, so you have to start in the center with these questions. Five will go there. Seven students have both a laptop and a tablet, so that must mean that two is the extra number there. Eleven students have both a desktop computer and a tablet. So desktop, tablet, 11, so that must be 6 here. 9 students have both a desktop computer and a laptop, so that's 9, so that must be 4 left over here. 16 students have a tablet, so that's 16 in total for that circle, so that's going to be 3 left over. 17 students have a laptop, so let's take that away, that'd be 6. And 19 students have a desktop computer, so that's going to be four left over. So the way we did that was we started from the center and worked our way outer to the two intersections and then outer to the final ones. And this is a group of 32 students they asked from. So I'm just going to double check whether this all adds to 32. Four plus four plus six plus five plus six plus two plus three. We had 30 students there. So there were two um, that were left behind and didn't have any of these three devices. Uh, using the information, complete the Venn diagram to show the number of students in each appropriate subset. One of the students with both desktop computer and laptop is chosen at random. Find the probability they also have a tablet. OK, so we need to consider a fraction here. One of the students with both a desktop computer and a laptop is chosen at random. So desktop and laptop. So in this case, we're only looking out of these nine students here. Find the probability the student also has a tablet. It's to be these five here in the intersection of all three that's included in the tablet set. So five out of nine is the answer. OK, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. OK, so let's start drawing the Venn diagram now. So we have French, German and Spanish speakers. So one, two, three. OK, so let's go for the intersection first, French, German, Spanish. So uh, we have nine students who speak French, German and Spanish. Nine. Nineteen students speak French and German. French, German, so that must be ten people to make the total nineteen. Twenty-eight people speak French and Spanish, so that must mean nineteen people here to make the total twenty-eight. Seventeen people speak Spanish and German. Spanish and German, 17, so it must mean 8 people here that will make the total 17. 45 students speak French, so grab the calculator. 45, take away these other three numbers, 19, 9, and 10. 
So we have seven, seven that just speak French. 50 students speak Spanish, so 50 take away 19, take away 9, take away 8. That gives us 14 Spanish speakers. And we have 80, 80 students in the language school. All students speak at least one of the three languages. So it's going to be 80 take away all of these numbers. 80 take away, let's grab a calculator. 80 take away 7, take away 10, take away 9, take away 8, take away 19, take away 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six numbers we're taking away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Good. So 13 people left behind that speak German just. Okay, good. So there we are. That's the answer to that question. Let's move on to part B. Find the, stu find the probability that this student speaks, Span speaks German but not Spanish. So it speaks German and not Spanish. So it's 23 people out of 80. Given that the student speaks German, so we're now just looking out of these German speakers. How many of do we have here? Because that would be the total fraction. So it would be 13, add 10, add uh, 17, 40. So that would be out of 40, this one. Find the probability that the student also speaks French. It would be these 19 people here. These 19 people are in the German circle, so we know they speak German and they also speak French. So 19 out of 40. And there we are. That's all we. Uh, that's all the questions we have for this video. So hopefully you found that video helpful. Hopefully you've improved your ability to answer set notation and Venn diagram questions. And uh, if not, then maybe come back in a couple of days' time, and hopefully you'll you'll have had to, your your brain will have had chance to process the skills in um, in in demand here, and um, and you'll be a little bit better next time. So thanks very much for watching, and hopefully you found it useful.